Hi there, welcome to our new tutorial explaining how to combine regional app stores from different countries into this single Samsung Smart Hub for the F series. What you can see at the moment on the screen is the usual UK app store with all the various streaming widgets from the BBC iPlayer, Demand5, etc. The goal of this tutorial is to explain how to actually combine widgets from multiple different country app stores into the single Samsung Smart Hub. So at the very end of this tutorial, when everything is complete, the Smart Hub will look quite different from what it does now. The final result should be a Smart Hub with apps mixed in from various different countries, including those from the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, and perhaps even one from the Netherlands. In order to achieve this, we need to hack into the television itself and gain access to the file structure. This does mean that there is an element of risk involved, so I recommend this really for only advanced users. And it goes without saying that you take full responsibility for any of your own actions. So, now that all that stuff is out of the way, the first thing you would have to do is to install the Skype app if that's not already installed. Head on over to the Samsung App Store, which you should find in the Smart Hub, and fire it up. It should take only a few minutes to load in. When it does, you're going to have to browse around or search for the Skype app. Now, it doesn't really matter if your television doesn't have a camera installed. This isn't important. The Skype app is used for the hack, and it just needs to be running in the background. So here it is. I'm going to download it now, install it, and run it. I'm pretty sure the Skype app is available in almost every country's app store. Though you may have to search for it a bit more than what I did here. If you really just can't find the Skype app in your current app store, you could always try changing the regional app store to a different country, such as the United States or the United Kingdom. There is another guide how to do that on Iron Demand. Just go through the How To menu and you should be able to find it. You probably guessed by this stage that you will need a Skype account in order to get the Skype app up and running and working. If you don't have one of these, it is free. You just go to the Skype website and set yourself up. Otherwise, sign in here. Now, I'm going to speed up this process as it takes a bit of time, but essentially you just need to make sure that Skype is set up so that it starts automatically when the TV starts. This can be configured in the settings if you have not already been asked during the sign up process. Now it's time to plug in that USB memory stick, which you prepared in step one, into a spare USB port, usually in the back of your television. Of course, I'm presuming at this stage that you have already downloaded and unzipped the file directly onto the root of that USB memory stick, as described on step one. Clear away the new device connected window that popped up as you don't need to directly access any of the files on that USB memory stick and hit the menu button on your remote. What we have to do now is to log in into the develop account on the Samsung Smart Hub. And you can do this by going to Smart Features, Samsung Account, and then Login. In a few short moments, the login screen should appear. And all you have to do now is to type in the word develop, D-E-V, E L O P in the email section. Don't worry about entering a password as you don't need one here. In fact, you don't need to press anything else, you just have to go to the login button and click that. It should only take a few seconds to log in. If you have problems and it doesn't log in straight away, just try the step again. The next step is to move across the Samigo widget, and for this I use a Windows computer. So fire one up and we shall look at that. Once you have the Smart Hub widget manager installed and up and running, copy the Semigo widget to the correct location as described in the how to, and then click the refresh button on the bottom right of the screen. If everything has been done correctly, you should now see in the top left of the screen the Semigo widget. All you have to do now is to tick the box to the left of it, or check the box if you're American. Now before you go back to the television, just make sure you grab the local or internal IP address of this Windows computer. It's needed for the next step. For the next step, we must pull the Samigo widget across from the Windows computer where it's currently residing. Head to the More Apps page from the link at the bottom of the screen, and then go to the top right where you find Options, and select IP Settings. Now enter the IP address of the Windows computer, which has the Smart Hub widget manager and the Semigo widget. 
for some unknown and bizarre reason, my particular Samsung television doesn't actually show the full IP address as we type it in. If you have problems at this stage, it could be that you're typing in the wrong address. So double check that, maybe type it in again. Once complete, go down the menu to select Start App Sync. If you see a window which is similar to what you see on the screen here, it means it's successfully installing the Samigo widget. Press OK when complete. The widget is typically installed in the first position and you can see that over here in the top left. The Samigo F widget is clearly visible. All you have to do now is to activate the widget simply by clicking it. It's a simple matter now to simply follow the instructions on the screen. If everything works OK as shown in this example, simply press the exit button on your remote and restart the television. By restarting I mean you can use the remote to switch it off and to power it back on again. And that concludes the first half of this guide. Either continue from step 9 on the webpage or look for the next video which follows this through to the end.